Hey everybody, welcome to day four. Can you believe it already? Day four of the Brilliantly Resilient Thrive Through Divorce Five Day Challenge. Look at all the smiles happening here. As you all know that are going through the muckety muck, muck, muck of divorce, we don't often smile and have a good time, but it is important to smile and have a good time whenever you can through this journey, whether you're at the beginning or what feels like 5,000 years in as I am, I'm only about five years in, it's, time, it's, it's important to take time to sit back, have some fun and focus on you. We've been talking about your finances, your children, all those different things. And today we're gonna to talk about us, our favorite topic. So uh, Mary Fran is gonna uh, bring in who our special super fun guest is today. We are so beyond excited to have our friend, Jeannie Rim, who's AKA Fashion Jeannie. So, okay, you know where we're going with this, guys. Jeannie, <laughs> Jeannie knows the power of clothes. When we look good, we feel good and, and we feel confident and powerful and self assured. And yes, I'll say the S word sexy. You're allowed to feel sexy. Jeannie Rim has honed her expertise with over 20 years of work in fashion, merchandising, buying, and more at Bloomingdale's, as well as in collaboration with a major designer in New York. This was New York stuff, folks, so she knows her stuff. Jeannie's love of fashion gave her an appreciation for the role that fashion can play in enriching people's lives, and that's what we're talking about today. Jeannie brings this passion and power to individual men and women, helping them dress with confidence and you can find her at fashiongenie.com. Jeannie, we are so excited to have you. Thanks for joining us. Hello, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. This is such an awesome uh, event that I'm thrilled that you reached out. Thank you. Awesome. Well, we're delighted to have you. And I think Kristen, you can probably talk to your own personal experience with this um, and how important it is to take a minute and focus on yourself and the way you look. I'm telling you, uh, we were talking about this a little bit before uh, we came on to the to the segment, and I ha I did not realize how much you can feel better, different, and and productive when you really start to tweak. I'm not saying completely change and go crazy over your wardrobe mm -hmm. and all, mm -hmm. but just tweak a little bit. And I was laughing with the girls before we came on, saying it was actually a guy friend of mine that said, "Kristen, get out of the sweats." <laughs> and when you start looking more like you and feeling better you're going to you're going to make better my his thing was you're going to make better choices you're going to make better decisions yeah. you're going to feel confident mm -hmm. again and i really mm -hmm. didn't i'm like i want to be comfy in my sweats and it's my kids sports teams you know and then i, yeah. I reached out to Jeannie and said you got to help me here i got to get into step into the life that i need to be in and and the rest is history that was so much fun. I loved working with you. And the thing that I love, actually both of you I've worked with, and both of you are tiny women. And when you're tiny like that, you don't need a lot of fabric. You don't need a lot of stuff on you because it's very overwhelming and it actually um, makes you appear bigger than you are. So there's a lot of little tricks about uh, silhouette and cuts especially for smaller frames. That's a funny thing that, that really, when I was thinking about today and about how we were going to, you know, approach all of this, that's one of the things that I, that I've read that people who are heavier or whatever feel like they have to put volumes on and mm. it's actually mm -hmm. the opposite, right? It's like, actually the opposite. Yes. yes. Yeah. It's, uh, I call it the potato sack effect. It's they just <laughs> uh, women they want to cover up and I, I, I totally, I get it, I get it. But it, it, and what I like to tell my clients too is take a picture of yourself when you're in an outfit and you'll see perhaps the, the depth and the perspective of, you know, wow, that's not as becoming on me as I thought it was. So we're not talking about clingy fabrics that like suck to your gut and like show all this, you know, as we get older, our midsection just gets bigger and bigger. It's awful. <laughs> we all know that we're, we've been there, especially menopause. Menopause sucks. <laughs> um, yes. Um, so I'm not talking clingy fabrics. I'm just talking some structure, some, some you know, just structure, just to show a little bit of, you know, of your curves because we want to show the curves. So there's that little fine line there. Remember when um, it was right before, it was right before the world shut down with COVID and 
we had our live event and you had been working with with both Mary Fran and I on the the clothes that like what you're saying it made us feel empowered and confident to deliver the message mm -hmm. that we wanted to deliver and also looked great mm -hmm. on camera it was it was phenomenal mm -hmm. and I took those tips because I had been at an event um, up in Boston and with my son and did this huge pharma speaking thing right and mm -hmm. then took your tips to, to change a few things for our live event with Mary Fran and I just a week later. And I did the side by side screenshot. I remember this. Yeah. I was like, and I put a thing out there. I said, I am the Blown away. exact same weight, had the exact same everything in my life. It was seven mm -hmm. days apart. And the difference in the pictures was unbelievable. It is. And, and I think I want to tell all your ladies out there that I'm not talking about spending a lot of money at all. Um, I'm talking about being smart about what you're buying. Number one, buy classic timeless items. If you just have one or two or three little pieces in your wardrobe, that's going to make a huge difference. And the other thing I'd like to say is don't buy crappy material. Honestly, it never looks good on. Uh, it just, it, the cuts, it's, I don't know what it is. The fabrics are important. So make sure it's a really nice fabric and you don't need to spend a lot of money on it. I'm not talking designer stuff. I mean, you can go, uh, Macy's, you can go to uh, Kohl's, you can go to Target. I mean, they all have really nice pieces that you can get to introduce to your wardrobe to start, you know, having this, these essentials that are really important to whatever, I don't know what your ladies do for a living, but, you know, of course, dress code is important according to industry. You have to keep that in mind. But if you just have the basics, then, you know, a few of them that fit well, you're good. So, so let's, let's hit on that for a minute. It, it's almost, I don't want to say it's irrelevant what they do for a living, but for, for people in, that we're talking to today who are going through divorce, they're in a different state of mind. They're, they're, mm -hmm. not, in, they're not in that happy, hey, let me see which blade no. is great on me state of mind. So how do they get started to like what Kristen said, to get out of the sweats? Where do you even begin to, to, to just take that first baby step and then move on from there? Well, let me just say that I, I, I understand divorce. I, my parents were divorced when I was younger and I saw my mom crying. I saw her going through all the phases of divorce and it's heartbreaking and it's very difficult. Um, but once you get through all of the phases of the mourning and the grieving, you know, and, and you come out of it, and I think they're here with you for a reason because they're ready to move on, right? I think that's, you know, one of the reasons why they're all with you, and that's really, really important. What I would say is know your industry, number one. Um, I, I, you know, if, if they're working, um, if they're staying home mom, then that's probably a little bit easier. If you are working, understand your industry. Um, the only industries that really you really need a suit, you know, it's, it's very conservative, you know, financing, um, maybe accounting, perhaps. Um, legal uh, industry, the legal industry. Legal industry, probably, yeah. right. And yeah, and then everything else is, is a little more casual. So know that um, you need just pick up your bootstraps, put a smile on your face. I know it's hard sometimes. Put a little bit of makeup on, do your hair. I'm not talking like crazy, blow, you know, not blowing it out and all this other stuff. I'm not talking a lot of makeup, just mascara, a little liner, and a little lip. And honestly, those little things will make you feel good. Then when you're ready and you feel like going shopping, because you really, you're not going to do it until you want to, until you feel like it. But when you're ready, take a look at your wardrobe, see what you already have, right? See what you own, because you don't want to duplicate what you own because you're wasting money. Know what you own, um, know what your, what your dress code is for work, and then just grab a blazer, grab a, a soft straight top, grab a, you know, a pair of a crop pants or a pair of khakis or whatever you're allowed to wear. Just grab one or two basic pieces. Then the key to that is once you have that, do the accessories. That is going to make the outfit look a little bit different. Perhaps it's a different pair of shoes. Uh, a different handbag, different earrings, a, a, you know, ring, something like that. But so when you're ready to go out into the world and when you're ready, when you feel good again, just go out and, and treat yourself, but, but be smart about what you're buying. So you, you know, again, you don't want to waste money. 
And try the clothes on when you're there in the sitting room. Try the clothes on, please. When we, when we can finally do that again. Please. Because that is I know. huge. I mean, that I know. is so huge. That idea of just, it's, it's, it really is all about the fit. I mean, and, and I think any woman who's ever put on a pair of jeans knows that. Because you can put on jeans from three different manufacturers and look completely different in each pair. Completely different. And it's very frustrating. It's very frustrating. And I'm not playing men designers. I'm not. But I'm just saying, <laughs> like, <laughs> these men guys, like, come on, people. Um, the little trick to that is if you, wanna, if, if you can't hit a store and you want to buy something online, buy two different sizes. I always say that. Cause just if, if your budget allows it, buy two sizes. You'll get both, try them on, hopefully one works, and then return the other one. Um, that'll just save you a little bit of time. But um, wait, I was going to make another point about the whole oh, outfit. Oh, um, don't get frustrated with your body. And, I, and you guys know I say this all the time. This is my mantra. It's not your body. That's the problem. It's the clothes that you're putting on it. They're just not right for your figure. Well, so important. Yeah. And I can completely 100% attest to that because we were in the fitting room, which I did not do before I met you, Jeannie. I would never try stuff. I'm like, I don't have time. I'll do it at home. Then I'll return stuff to later. And then I was like, I want to just jump off the bridge because I'm like, why did I do that? But when we were in that fitting room, that's what we did. We had, I mean, I had stuff that was minuscule size. And then I, we had some stuff that was yeah. of several sizes and I couldn't believe mm -hmm. that it, and you said to me, it's not your body, it's the clothes. And when mm -hmm. I tried all that stuff, I thought, oh, and yeah, some of it looked ridiculous, but it was just the way that, that the fit was and it was the same brand. And then when mm -hmm. we found, I got to tell you though, when we found like the, the pair of jeans and, and I'll say this with, with all kinds of confidence now and not as a victim at all, but I was with somebody that for 19 years said, there's not a pair of jeans in the world that looks good on you. Oh, Japan. And now I wear jeans. All I just the time got chills. I got the right, I got good ones, you know, one or two pairs is all. And I've had the one pair since, since you and I met years ago, but they still, mm -hmm. I take care of them, you know, and I follow all the washing ingre ingredients, steps, washing steps. I'm like, ingredients. <laughs> but. And, and the other, yes, yes. Um, good. I'm so glad uh, you feel that way. Uh, there is, I have clients who are size two and I have clients who are size 22. I have a, a client, she's, she's 411 and I have one who's six foot one she was a softball player and I don't care what size you are there is something for everyone that is going to make you feel beautiful again and I know divorce sucks and it depletes you and it sucks the soul right out of your body um and when you're ready I want you to really jump on board and be like you know what screw this, I'm, I'm done. Like I, I just, I want to feel good again. I want to get out there for you, not for anyone else, for yourself. Mm -hmm. So you feel confident and beautiful. And like I say what their friend says, but I say appropriately sexy. Cause you know, we have to be careful. Oh, you sure. don't want to be, you know, and yeah. a little, you don't want to be hoochie. Um, <laughs> you need to be careful. <laughs> but I think, I think, I think at that stage, that's the last thing women feel. The last thing they feel is sexy. I, I mean, somebody's somebody is rejecting them. Know. You know, so know. It's, awful. it's it's so important that they allow themselves to feel that. But the thing that really I want people to really get is you it's not your like you said, it's not your body, it's it's the clothes. Kristen, those two pictures that you were talking about, and you're you know, you're a small, slim woman. You had two different blazers on. The one mm -hmm. basically looked like a tent on you mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it just didn't fit you right. So I guess what, what the point that, that I would like to reiterate for people is go out there, try things in that range of sizes. Don't be married to a size. Don't have a meltdown if you go up a size in something and it fits you better because the way, you know, manufacturers make things, it's, it's all different, but be all willing different. to try that stuff and, tr and maybe try stuff. This is the thing that I loved about when you and I chatted. And when you gave me some some advice, maybe try things that you don't think are you. Mm -hmm. Like you said to me, go buy graphic tees, and I was like, I'm too I'm too old for that. I'm too you know, I have a closet full of them now because they're so cute. Yay. 
but it's yeah. something simple that I wouldn't have thought of that modernized things a little bit. And they're t-shirts for heaven's sakes. I got them at Ross. They're like $8 a piece. Absolutely. Yeah. It's amazing. And you also told me one other thing that I want to tell people that was life-changing for the way I dress. You told me to tuck in my shirt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I changed both the front our tuck, yeah. It was huge. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The front tuck. Yeah. Cause you're tiny. Both of you are tiny. And, um, oh, you know, again, it's that whole, uh, that longer t-shirt, the longer top, and, and that's that whole swallowing up your body. And the, the thing that's great is that whole front tuck method works for any size, any size. And, and I challenge any of your women to tell me it's not going to work. I mean, I will prove them wrong. Yeah. I had the same clothes in my closet. I think I might've gone and bought a, a blazer. But I had the same clothes in my closet when we did our live event and I tucked in my shirt and I, I and I had like a plain white tee on with a with a black and I was like, like, I own these clothes and they never looked like this on me before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what um, so give us a couple of maybe maybe I, I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but maybe two or three tips that people can when they're going out to look for those things and they just don't feel happy about the way they look, what are like two or three things that everybody should look for in, in clothes? In, um, specifically like an item or just, I mean, uh, whether, whether it's an item or whether it's the way something fits or color or whatever, like what, what are you trying, what are we supposed to be achieving with, with our clothing? <laughs> The, one of the most important things that I can tell all of you is when you're out shopping, one, bring a friend and, and mm -hmm. take the, don't rush it. Take a day, take a half a day, take a couple of hours. Don't do it on lunch. Don't do it in the evening between, you know, baseball games or basketball games, whatever it is. Take the time for yourself. Bring a friend. If you can't bring a friend, make sure you have your phone. The most important thing is when you put something on and you go, yeah, it's good. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, I need it. I need it. I'm just going to get it wrong. I want you to put something on and be like, damn, like this is so <laughs> good. And it makes me feel so good. That's when I want you to buy it. Uh, and I also would hope, and again, this is all within a budget that you get the whole outfit. Don't go home and say, I think I have you know, X, Y, Z, that's going to go with this because you know what? You probably don't. And if you do, it might be too old and it's just not going to work. So I would recommend take a little more time and pull together a whole outfit, unless you know for sure that that blazer or that top or those shoes or whatever is going to work. Um, and that's going to save you time and frustration. Now, when you get into the sitting room and you have an outfit on, and I said this earlier, take your phone, take a photo of yourself, you know, in the mirror and then look at it because it looks different when you look in the mirror. And then when you look on the phone, it just looks different. Mm -hmm. And if you like, if you love the way it looks, go for it and just, and buy it. If you're hemmed and hauling, you don't like it. It's like meeting a guy, right. Or, you know, whatever it is. If you need someone, you're like, yeah, well, you know, I'm kind of bored. And I think I need just, you know, whatever dinner date. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. Right. I love that. And, you know, I want to get back to the closet, everyone's closets. Like, what are we getting rid of? Because you know what? I feel like this is also an opportunity. Your, your life is changing. You're getting, I hate to say getting rid of some things, but you are shedding some things for better or for worse or whatever. So what do we do when we go into our closets and how do we purge and know what to keep? Okay, so there's two ways that I um, recommend purging. One, it could be very daunting for a lot. Nobody really likes taking a Saturday to purge a closet. So what I would recommend is, if you can do this, have a garbage bag, right? Because you want to donate or sell uh, or throw out. If it's really disgusting, don't even donate it because the people who need the clothes don't want gross clothes, right? Mm -hmm. They want to feel beautiful and empowered as well. So you get up in the morning and you're getting dressed and you're like, Oh my God, this I never wear it. Guess what? Take it off, put it in the bag. If you have, and I know we all have it. 
all the way in the back in the corner you have like that those clothes that you know oh you know if I lose five more pounds it's gonna fit me but they're also 10 years old Mary Fran are you laughing because you have that I literally (laughs) just threw out three pairs of pants that I was like you I just need to lose three pounds and I'll fit into these again I'm like I don't them that much well you know what number one I like them that much well and it's also going to be more frustrating for you because if you don't lose those three pounds you're just you're going to keep thinking yourself were, every time I went into that closet and I was like you and know you were, I'm better than stop. this I yes. deserve better than this yes better than this. And, <laughs> yeah so so those clothes that are dusty you know like on the shoulders on the hanger because you haven't worn them one they're probably already dated so just get rid of it and um it's it's very cleansing. Like, you know, I always talk about clothing and, and your soul and, you know, that's really what it's all about. And when you have a closet, that's just like exhausting to look at. You go in and you, you pick something out and just leave and you don't even care what you look like because you're exhausted looking at it. Mm-hmm. Right. So do this, get your bags, go through your closet. Uh, if you have a Saturday, then do it on a Saturday or a Sunday, whatever it is, if you have it. But a lot of the women I talk to don't have all the time because they're just busy. So Every morning, duh, 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 duh. and I tell my husband the same thing. Men, what is it with these men? And just start throwing, you know, these shoes. These shoes are ugly. It's, it, it, the shoes, oh my God, shoes. Shoes can kill an outfit. They will kill an outfit. If your shoes are scuffed and that little leather on the back of the heel is peeling and you don't have the tip or the front is like curled up and it's all peeling, do me a favor, just get rid of them because... You, Hmm. what you, you know, like it or not, what you wear is representative of how you feel about yourself. So if you walk out to work and your your shoes are crappy and, and, and you're not really, and you don't care, it's sending a message. And I don't think we want to send that kind of a message. And I think now, especially since we're all taking this turning point in our lives, it's just really important that um, everything just kind of gels together, right? And it, your closet has to be cl- cleaned out or, or you just start going through some pieces, get, get rid of the trash. It's just so mentally cleansing. Um, and I really think when you go in the closet in the morning and it is cleaned out, you're going to go, okay, now I know what I have. Now I know what I love. Now I know what fits me. Now I know what I need. Awesome. So and starting the day, not helps. in overwhelm and not in chaos. And that Correct. is what divorce does to your life, overwhelm and chaos. And then you can take one space of it and have control and say, okay, I'm going to look in my closet, find something to wear, and I'm not overwhelmed and chaotic. Magnificent. Right. Yeah. And I think it, it gives you that it's, an, it is empowering. Like you said, Kristen, you take control of that one thing. And I don't think that people recognize that we have emotional attachments to clothes. We, we have emotional, we have feelings about clothes. So why not set yourself up to feel good about what you're seeing and don't be afraid to get rid of those things. And I just love what you just said yeah. about the, the, the clothes that have the dust on the shoulders. Oh my God. We all have them. Ow, Mary Fran, I think I need to come to your house. Oh I'm my God. I just, I literally <laughs> just did everything that you just said about a month ago. I was like, and how this, do you feel? I, it was so liberating. And that's I kind know. of what I want people to get out of this. I it want is. people to understand that you can gain some power. Maybe, maybe you're in the middle of this divorce thing and it's, and you're in the legal mess and the kids and, the, and all of that is challenging, but you can gain some personal power back by owning that part of you. Get into that closet, get rid of the crap, and you know you've got crap in there, and and go out and buy yourself some new things. And like Jeannie said, it doesn't have to be expensive. I go to Ross, like, you know, I'm a Ross and TJ Maxx. Go in there and wander around and, yeah. and give yourself a little bit of, of joy. And I think- But go to the fitting room. <laughs> oh yeah, you gotta go to the fitting room. <laughs> Can I just say one or two little things? So I, I know going through lots of closets, um, we all have um, um, sentimental pieces of clothing, whether it's mm-hmm. your grandmother's or your mother's, or I'm not even sure what it is. You know, even though it's old, don't get rid of that, right? And, and we all need that crappy, nubby sweater, and we all need a sweat, you know, sweatpants. 
So keep some of that. You know, I just mean, you need some of that. We all want that. Uh, you should see me the other day. I had, it was, it was hot here, but I had like sweats that didn't match and, and, a, and a sweater and my hair was like up in a bun. And Alan, my husband always says, you know, fashion genius, you know, wait till they see you now. You know, I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I'm comfortable. You know, you feel bloated and sometimes you just don't want to always feel put together. But in general, mm-hmm. that is, is, that is, you know, definitely the way to go. And then one other thing is, I know some of you may be thinking, oh, this sounds great. You know, I don't have the time to do this. And you know what? And that's fine. But just take it and put it in the back of your brain. And when you're ready and you will be ready, I know you will be ready. Then you, then you conquer that. And then, then you start working on yourself. It will, it will happen. It will happen. I love that. That's a perfect note to end on. This was just as fun as I thought it was going to (laughs) be. And now I know a little bit about Mary Fran's closet and how wonderful. Oh dear God! It's better. It's so much better. I totally oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it is. It's so much better. I got rid of the dust things. I got rid of them. Goodbye. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Tini, thanks so much for for joining us and putting a smile on our faces for the entire time that we were sitting here in the Zoom room. And I know that those that are listening and struggling and trying to move from broken to brilliant, this is a huge step that they're going to take to move out of feeling broken. So thanks so much for joining us again. Thank you all that are tuning into this challenge. And tomorrow we wrap it up. I can't believe it's it's day five. And Jeannie said several times today, you might not feel like putting yourself together with clothes and all, but you are going to. And tomorrow we're gonna wrap it up with how I went from broken to brilliant. My number one, my number one uh, tool tactic, which was the miracle morning. So I'm going to share with you how I did that. And that was how, if you watch my trajectory from four and a half years ago, that was the tipping point for me. And then the clothes and then getting ahead of my finances, all the stuff we talked about this week. So tune in tomorrow. Thanks again, Jeannie. God bless. Thank you.